guys. So I'm doing something different this time. I've got a PowerPoint. So you don't have to just look at my face. <laughs> you have something better to look at for it uh, while I chat away. So first of all, thank you guys so much for being here and for just showing up and coming for this. I hope that it's going to be uh, something encouraging and I hope that it's going to maybe stir up some really special memories for some of us. I know as I was preparing for this, it did that for me. So this was really a special thing to prepare and you'll see, you're probably going to see my excitement as, as we go through, but um, thank you to St. Tammany Parish Library, Stacy and Jillian for like putting this together and for hosting. Um, and I, like I said, I hope that it's encouraging for everybody. So this is love letters, not just for lovers. All right. So who am I? Now, some of you guys might know me or you've heard me speak before, but I figured I'd toss these up here. I'm an indie author, publisher, editor, podcaster, speaker, blogger, but most importantly, a word lover. Okay. I think we all have that in common for sure. But I'm also a wife to an amazing man who was born in New Orleans East. He grew up here in Slidell. And I am the mom of two super creative kiddos who I homeschool. I'm also a minivan enthusiast and I am a wanderer who has found a home in Slidell. So the interesting thing well is I have never lived in a place as long as I have lived here in Slidell at this point. We've been here, um, it, it's close to, well, this year will be 11 years. So I had never lived in a place that long before. So at this point, Slidell is home. <laughs> So in this workshop, we are going to discover a few important letters in history, in literature, including in some of a couple of my books, and in culture. And I'm going to leave you guys with a letter writing challenge. So you may not have thought you were going to have homework, but you <laughs> are. <laughs> but I hope that this will be welcomed homework. And I cannot wait to hear. I hope some of you guys share what you end up doing with me because I would love to hear about it. So to kind of get us started, I'm going to put these questions up here and I'm going to read them and then we're going to come back to them at the end. Okay, so just kind of keep these in the back of your mind. And at the <laughs> end, after we've kind of gone through um, some of the things, I would love to hear if some of you would like to share some of your answers to these. And I'm also going to be asking you another question at the end that I hope everyone will share with us. So when was the last time you received or wrote a handwritten letter? What makes a handwritten letter so special? What is your best letter memory? That might take some thinking. <laughs> and who would you like to write? Okay, so keep those in the back of your mind. We're gonna dive right in. And then we will come back to this. So, all right. As I was thinking about letters through history, um, I got to thinking about how different our history would have been without letters. Just for a few examples, think about wars. Think about what a huge impact uh, and a huge part letters played in wars. Uh, you had people who would run letters to let the general know what the other army was doing, right? Um, if we didn't have letters, then how would that communication have happened? Um, it Letters also give us great insights into the past. And I'm gonna talk more about that as we go on, especially as we get to talking about literature in, uh, or letters in literature. Uh, it's just amazing to see some of the letters from the past and the information that it gives us that we wouldn't be able to have otherwise about what life was like. And it also enabled us to have better global knowledge. So that seems odd to us today because here we are, we're all sitting in our own living rooms, but we're chatting face to face thanks to technology, but that didn't used to be the case. So with letters, people could write letters and put it on a ship and it could go across the ocean and they could get letters in return and find out what was going on in other countries. So without letters, they wouldn't have been able to do that. So those are just a few of the things that came to my mind as I was thinking about how history would have been different without letters. So I did a search and 
um, as you guys see, oh, hold on, let me do this real quick for some of you. Um, oh, I may not be able to do this when I have my screen shared. All right, I'm gonna stop sharing my screen for just a second. I'm gonna pop into the chat and I am going to see if I can share. Hmm. See, I told you that I tried this and it worked before and now I'm not seeing that it's working. Oh, well. All right. Then Stacy is so sweet and kind. She is going to send out to you guys the PDF of this PowerPoint. And in that at the end, you will have uh, two, or actually it's three pages worth. Uh, two of those pages are going to have a whole bunch of books that you can check out with the call numbers from our amazing library that you might find interesting. And another page is going to have some of the links from the information that I'm sharing with you guys. So what I did was I just kind of typed in most famous letters in history. I was curious what have been some of the most fav famous. And, oops, sorry. Hmm. I know I can go back somehow. Ah, there it is. All right, so as I was looking at, I think I looked at several different websites and they had a whole bunch of lists and I chose the four most popular that I found on all of those lists. And then I added a couple of others that I just found interesting. So these top four, Martin Luther King Jr.'s letter from Birmingham jail was by far the most common mentioned letter on the most famous letters list. Then we have Queen Atosa and this, her letter was um, declared as being the first known letter. Now, were there letters before that? I don't know, probably, but this is the first one we know of and it dates back to 500 BC, kind of cool. And then Winston Churchill's response to his secretary that he was not going to make a deal with Germany. If he hadn't written that letter, how different would World War II have turned out? And then Einstein's atomic letter um, or atomic bomb letter that he sent to FDR. And this was the letter where he let FDR know that Germany had been working on the atomic bomb. As we know now, looking back, they didn't have what they could have potentially had. And Einstein is known to have said that he kind of wished he hadn't written that letter because it opened up the atomic era. So mm -hmm. after that, so those were, those were the four most common that were on all of these lists that I saw. Then Abraham Lincoln, uh, his Bigsby letter has been very interesting in history. And I did not know about this until I was reading about it. And in the list of links, there is a link that is specifically about this letter that they have come up with some new information and some new proof that Abraham Lincoln did in fact write this letter himself this was a letter that he wrote to a young, uh, or a mother, her name was Mrs. Bigsby, and five of her sons died in the Civil War. Mm. And over the years, people have said, oh, it was his secretary who wrote this or whatever. But according to this article that you guys can check out, um, there's new research from his son that his son said, no, my dad wrote that. So little interesting tidbit. I could just picture Abraham Lincoln sitting at his desk writing this letter. And it's also labeled as one of the most beautiful letters um, in history. And then of course, the letters of St. Paul and of others. I mean, all the letters that we have in the Bible, um, I think those are pretty neat and especially that we have them still. So what about in literature? Letters have long been influential for authors' creative lives. And we see this in authors writing letters to one another, letters of encouragement to one another. We see this in aspiring writers who write to authors asking for advice. Uh, and then authors to famous people or influencers, maybe it's politicians or things like that, um, where we have a lot of letters throughout history going back and forth between some of them. And then of course you have the uh, letters from fans that a lot of authors receive and often answer. And 
it could also be just encouragers, you know, behind every author, there are usually family and friends who support them and encourage them. And so in a lot of collections of letters for authors, you'll find a lot of those letters. Um, also, many authors, I would imagine, have been inspired by letters for their own writing. Now, I only did a quick search about this because I thought, oh, surely there's a ton of authors who credit some sort of letter with an inspiration for their book. But the one that really popped out in my very brief um, check was Jack Kerouac. Uh, he was inspired by a kind of drug-induced, apparently, letter <laughs> to write his book on the road. So I thought that that was kind of a fun little bit of trivia. There are countless book examples of authors' letters, and you're going to find on that list from all of the books that you can find at our library that they have a ton of books that are just collections of letters that authors have written to one another or to their fans or, um, you know, that whole list of things that I mentioned a moment ago. And there are also some other books in the links. You'll see some links to some other books that our library doesn't have that also share some amazing letters amongst authors. Um, I always think about J.R.R. Tolkien and all of the Inklings and how they got to meet together, but they also wrote letters to one another. And it was a way that they, um, they shared with one another, they encouraged one another, they helped one yeah. another be better. And I just love that. Um, so some examples, yeah. and these are yeah. ones that you won't find at our library, but the letters of Flannery O'Connor, um, The Habit of Being, and this is edited and put together by Sally Fitzgerald. Then C.S. Lewis's Letters to Children. And I think that this is the cutest thing I've ever seen. Mm -hmm. These are letters, he would receive letters from kids all the time, asking for help with their own writing. And he would respond to every single one of them. And mm -hmm. he gave such great advice. So that is a book that I'm very excited to get my hands on. And then... As of course I mentioned, J.R.R. Tolkien, and I happen to have a copy of this one. This is the letters of J.R.R. Tolkien. And these are letters that he wrote to uh, his publisher, to other authors, to uh, family members, to so many different people. It's just an incredible book. The history that's in there and the insight into how he wrote and how he came up with his stories is pretty neat. So I would recommend those. Those are a few that, that our library doesn't have, but that I'm sure you could get um, at Miss Mary Lou's in Slidell or um, the Book and the Bean in Mandeville, some of our amazing independent bookstores locally. So another thing that letters did for literature is they inspired an entire genre to itself. It's called the epistolary. So uh, the very first, well, not the very first, one of the first, let me say it that way. One of the first epistolaries was Pamela by Samuel, Samuel Richardson. Some of you guys may have read this in maybe like a literature class or something, maybe in high school. I remember I had to read it and I'll be honest, I thought it was horrible. <laughs> <laughs> I did not enjoy it at all, but it is written as a just a group of letters written by this girl to her parents. So that was one of the very first epistolary fiction novels. There's also Flowers for Algernon. And that was one that I remember reading, I think in seventh grade. And I still remember sitting there bawling my eyes out reading that book. Oh my goodness gracious. Um, I remember that was the same year that we read Brian's Song and I think I read Where the Red Fern Grows that same year. I mean, it was like, it was <laughs> Sob City, like major <laughs> Sob City. <laughs> I will never forget that year. <laughs> so those are a couple that um, I couldn't find on our library's website. They might have these. I don't know. Maybe I didn't type it in quite right. Um, I know Pamela has a different name too. It's like Virtue, Virtue, so, uh, Virtue Rewarded. So it could be in the catalog under that name instead. Um, and then I have 
my book, This Good Thing, and this is in our library, and it's very little. It's teensy tiny, not like my first one, which is a lot larger. This is a novella, but it, and it's not strictly an epistolary, but it does have letters sprinkled in, um, in between the chapters. And they are letters that are written by the main character, Carolina, who knows that she is in her last year of life. And Carolina is a young mother and she's writing letters to her daughter. So you can imagine, you're probably gonna need tear, uh, some <laughs> Kleenex for this one as well. Um, but our, our library does have this. And the book, one of the books that I'm currently writing that I hope will be out soon is called One Good Thing. And it is an epistolary and it will contain uh, letters and journal entries. So I am very excited to have that one released soon. I hope, I'm hoping this year, fingers crossed. So as you guys can see, letters have kind of been a big part of my own writing. Um, when I started writing, I started writing Any Good Thing. That was my first, first book. It's back there behind me somewhere. Um, that was my debut novel and when I wrote that, it was just supposed to be one book, right? Just any good thing. It was about this guy named Jack and Jack makes a lot of mistakes and he also has a lot of unfortunate things happen. And he just doesn't know how to deal with that. He kind of runs away from everything. He thinks that he's the cause of all the problems and the best thing for him to do is just to run away from it all. Um, and so any good thing follows his journey. It's kind of a road to redemption story. Um, and, but out of that story, out of that novel, in trying to figure out how I was going to end that novel, these letters started coming to my mind. And these letters were not from a character who was even in that book. They came from Carolina, the main character in This Good Thing, who had passed away years before. Carolina was the mother of Jack's best friend, Rachel. And through her letters, um, which continued after her death, uh, they were her legacy. And they became the thing that made any good thing and all of the other books that are in this collection make sense. It made them all come together in a cohesive fashion. So when I realized how influential and important the legacy of her letters that she left behind to her daughter were, I knew that I had to write her story. And that's how this good thing came to be. And I will also have one good thing. That's the one that I mentioned. And then there'll be a fourth one to round it out. And that's every good thing. And it's a collection of short stories that follow some of the secondary characters in any good thing. So that's a little, a little snippet about, <laughs> about how those books all came together. But it really was the letters that fueled the entire collection and made it all what it is. So one other thing, and this is, this is gonna show you where or how letters inspired me in my own life in order to inspire these books. Consider your experiences with letters and think back to letters you've received over your lifetime or letters that you've sent. What things might be different for you if you didn't have letters? Um, you know, for me, I, my brother was in the Marine Corps and one of the things that they always tell you when you have a loved one who is in a branch of the service, if they're going through training or if they're overseas, um, they say, send all the letters you can because that encourages them and it kind of gives them um, just a little boosted morale when they receive letters in the mail. So when my brother was in boot camp, I was young. I was probably, mm, I don't know, probably around nine, nine or 10, maybe, uh, maybe even younger than that. And I just remember writing him letters and receiving the letters from him on the Marine Corps boot camp official stationery that, that they gave them. And uh, that was such a great time. It was an opportunity for me to really get closer to my brother through those letters. And then 
um, I had the opportunity to write letters to another guy later uh, in my life when he was going through training. And so that just always kind of stuck with me. And letters from boot camp shows up in any good thing. Uh, it's kind of a, a big part. Then I've also had pen, pal pen pals from around the world. I remember having a pen pal when I was a little girl who lived in Scotland. And I got to learn a little bit about their country and um, about her. And I just thought it was the neatest thing that I could communicate with someone across the pond, as we like to say. So then this is where it gets really sappy and sweet. And you're going to see just how far back letters go for me. And I have a feeling that a lot of you might have some things like this, too. These are letters that were written by my great, 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 four greats grandfather to his daughter back in the 1890s. Wow. My grandfather was, his name was Isaac Simpson, and he was a ship captain. And these are the letters that he wrote to his daughter that got passed down and he died in a shipwreck. Um, but we, we know a lot of things about the shipwreck. We know a lot of things about them and we know, um, you know, obviously about his relationship with his daughter, thanks to these letters that have lasted for so long. And thanks to my grandparents who passed them down. <clears throat> and speaking of my grandparents, these are their love letters. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to try not to cry. But anyway, <laughs> my grandmother passed away um, just a few years ago. My grandfather passed away a number of years ago, back when I was in college. And he and I had a very special relationship. And he was the one who I talked to probably the most about being a journalist, about being a reporter. That's where I began my career. And he loved English. He loved to write. He wrote his memoirs. I have his memoirs, which is an, another just absolute gift in itself. Uh, and I just remember having those conversations with him where he would talk to me about his own writing and he would talk to me about um, the things that I read about in the letters or in his memoir. Um, so letters are a huge, have been a huge part of my life and a huge part of, in, well, a huge influence, I guess, on how I write and why it's just natural for me to include letters in the writing that I share. So they're just, um, letters are also great reminders of the past. You know, when we go back and we look through the letters that we've received, it reminds us of things that we probably have forgotten about, you know. All right, so what about our culture today? Do we feel like, and I'm not gonna answer these questions. These are kind of just <clears throat> thought questions, rhetorical. Is letter writing a dying art? And what are the cultural implications of this? Now, the interesting thing, my, uh, my co-author and co-podcaster, we were recording our, our podcast last night and I was talking to her about this workshop and we got into this whole conversation about it. And we both said the same thing that there's, there's a bit of a disconnect, um, it feels like, that might be a void because of not having handwritten letters. Um, it's just not the same when you quickly dash off an email or um, you send a text with pictures instead of letters. <laughs> you know, it's, it's not the same. And I think that we do kind of have that disconnect because we don't have the more um, personal interaction of sitting there and writing out our thoughts by hand to another person. Um, I think, and this is something that I'll probably talk about a little bit when we do the journal writing um, workshop next month. I think that's on March 12th, mm. uh, where, you know, journals are such a huge thing to help us think through life and to think through who we are and what our place is in this life. And letters do the same thing. Um, they're just a way that we can share and communicate that with someone else. So how will this affect future generations? Um, and, you know, you think like right here, I'm sitting here holding letters that were written in the 1890s by my 
great times four grandfather, who of course I was never going to be able to meet, but because I'm, I'm holding letters that he held that his pen wrote on, um, there's just something very special and tangible about that cultural um, part of history, part of my personal history. So what we've done so far is we've discovered a few important letters in history, in literature, and in culture. Oh, I forgot. I was going to read you guys just a couple of things from here. Hold on. How are we doing on time, Stacy? Good. Good? OK, because they're short. I'm just going to read a couple of paragraphs. And then um, after that, we're going to dive right into the letter writing challenge. So. So this is from This Good Thing, and these are the letters that were written by Carolina to her daughter um, that she wanted to make sure she wrote a letter for every, every big event that she could think of that would happen in her daughter's life that she wasn't going to be there in person for. So this one is When You're Ready to Say I Do. I do have a few thoughts to share with you about marriage. It's not all flowers and candy and romance and dates and fun. No, ma'am. Marriage is broken dishwashers, flat tires, dying air conditioners, empty bank accounts, and sick kids all at the same time. It's bills and worry and stress. It's juggling family and responsibilities and time. It's disagreeing over how to roll the toothpaste and fold the towels. It's the absolute terror of realizing newborns don't come with a manual. It's bearing one another's burdens all the time for the rest of your life. Marriage is also a daily deciding to put the other one first, to love despite the disagreements, and to keep marching through whatever rocky terrain, mountains, or valleys you encounter together. And it's a daily deciding to do all this through Christ. If he's not the center of your marriage, you're trudging uphill through a mudslide while carrying a 500 pound anvil with a frayed rope. Marriage is also flowers and candy and romance and dates and fun. It's laughter and tears together. It's making a family together and it's being with your best friend every day for the rest of your life. It's waking up to your lover's face every morning and kissing him every night. It's doing life with your beloved and knowing you have found the one to whom your heart belongs and for whom it beats true. And then this is from One Good Thing, which is still being written. So you guys are actually the first people to hear any part of this. So One Good Thing is, I told you it's, it's, a, it's a combination of letters and journal entries. And the letters are from the main character of Any Good Thing, Jack Calhoun. And he's writing these letters um, after he's kind of run away from things and he's writing to someone he left behind. Someone he doesn't think he'll ever see again. Um, and he, he left her behind for a purpose. Why am I writing you this letter? Great question. Maybe because I'm not really ready to say goodbye. Maybe because I don't have to move on because I never really can or deserve to. Maybe because I've gotten used to this whole letter writing thing. I guess some people journal their thoughts. I'd rather tell you about my days. Maybe I just want someone to talk to, someone who knows me better than anyone else, someone who won't put up with my crap, someone who can uncover my heart, my soul, my hidden self, the good and the ugly, because I need you. I need you so much it terrifies me. I'm a mess, but you always saw beyond that. Maybe writing to you will help me clear away some of the mess and help make sense of the confusion I feel twisting up inside me. All right, so are you guys ready for your homework? <laughs> All right, you probably figured it out. I want you guys to write someone this weekend. Okay. So like, don't even wait until next week. Like, in fact, do it today. Cause you know, what's going to happen if you're anything like me, you're be like, Oh yeah, that's a great idea. I'm going to do that on Tuesday and Tuesday's going to come and you will have forgotten all about it. So 
do it today. <laughs> Who are you going to write? Okay, it could be a family member or a friend. Um, it could be a future generation. Maybe you want to write to some person in the future. Okay, talk about what life is like in 2021. Maybe you want to write to someone who is lonely. And here's where I know, I don't know if they're still doing it. Maybe, maybe one of you guys knows. I know Greenbrier had a pen pal thing going on where you could write to a member, a resident of Greenbrier. And I think there might've been some other, um, other residents like that where you could do that kind of pen pal thing. Um, so maybe you can think of someone who's lonely you could write to someone famous. You could write to, you could write your congressman. <laughs> you could write your favorite author. You could write um, just someone that you admire. <coughs> you could also write someone who's passed away. Um, there, like, I want you guys to think outside of the box on this. Um, sometimes we miss people who aren't with us and it's very therapeutic to get our thoughts down, things that we wish that we could say to them. You could write a letter to God. You could, and I don't have this on the list, but you could write a letter to yourself. Um, you could even write a letter to your younger self. Like what would you have said to yourself at age 16 or 20 or whatever? All right. So think outside of the, the envelope, huh? and outside of the mailbox. So you don't have to put this in the mail, okay? You also don't have to put it in an envelope. I still have this. My sister sent me this for my birthday when I was in college and it is shaped like a bottle and it has inside of it a sweet little note from her, but it has candles and it has this little tiny balloon that says happy birthday. And it has this little tiny present, like, you know, little box that looks like a present. And I don't know how she mailed this, but obviously they let her. And I still have it today. When I was talking with my friend May last night, she showed me one of the most beautiful things I've ever seen. And I kind of teared up a little. She did a message in a bottle that she wrote to her now husband when they were dating. And he still has it. Um, she said that she went to the Dollar Tree. She got um, just a glass bottle. She got some of that burlap twine or whatever it's called. I can't remember what it's called. Um, wrapped it around, put some beads on there. It looked really pretty. And she put this letter inside of it to give to him and they still have it. I was like, oh, that's so sweet. And I have to share that with everyone tomorrow. <laughs> so I also hope that you guys will share this challenge with others um, and definitely commit to doing it. And then let me know how it goes. So. Now we've reached the actual like back and forth part of this where I would love to know what you guys think about each of these questions. So if you wanna answer any of these, you're welcome to, but I definitely would love to know who your person is you're planning to write. Mine's my brother. Okay. He's a great guy and he doesn't know it. So that's my Aww. thing. Between and letting know. Oh, I love that. That's so special. I'm going to write a letter to my grandchildren. Oh, they'll love that. I'm going to write six of them because I have six grandchildren. <laughs> Yay! You get the gold star. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> Joy, so mm -hmm. you think this need? So I'm going to look the, the handwriting part always slows me down because I can type faster and I can fix it if when I want to you know express it in a better with better words and so what do you think about that yeah I definitely think that that that's fine I think so I think that it's really the heart behind it and this is something it, and I, I love that you said this because this is something that May and I did talk about last night mm -hmm. um most often when we're sending an email we're doing it very quickly a lot of times we might even be doing it from our phone in between 50 tasks and our minds aren't really there. When you are writing, whether it's an email or a letter, whatever you're writing, whichever method that you're, you're choosing to use, mm -hmm. 
if you take the time to sit and and spend that extra time and think through what you want to tell the person and you share meaningful things it's mm -hmm. obvious to the person like, receiving it qualifies okay <laughs> yes definitely definitely I did, I did write a hand i just i think i saw that this was coming up and i it, that sort of triggered something like you know i got i you know in terms of like getting and receiving holiday cards i got one you know and then i'd already sent it so I, you know, I wanted to talk to her about what she'd sent. So I did, I did actually hand wrote it and it's not as bad as I thought, but, um, but, but I just need that permission, I think. So when I don't, when I don't like the way the handwriting, you know, you know, sometimes it just doesn't work. The handwriting or the pen, I'm not really sure which. Yeah. But um, yeah, that's true. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, for sure. I might write my children in the future, like to give to them in the future. Somebody had suggested that to me before. And I just love that idea, you yes. know, because I don't know. They're so into their life now. And, and eventually the, you know, I know just like I was, you know, when I was young and then going through child rearing, not as much time to reflect and want to just piece things together and understand after looking back at what, you know, my child rearing was like, you know, what, um, you know, how, what kind of perspective to put it into. Yeah. Oh, that's excellent. And that would be a time that Maybe, um, maybe you could do some parts of that in your handwriting, because I think the thing like when I'm looking at this, I'm like, you know, this is my, my great times for grandfather who I never would have met, but I know what his handwriting looked like. I, I, so, I hear you. Maybe I, I, yeah. I, I think a, hy a hybrid. Yes, a hybrid. That would be perfect. That okay. would be so perfect. Thank you. Yeah. I've had a long, uh, lifelong <laughs> connection with letters. Um, cause I lived away from home for a long time mm -hmm. and about five and a half years, I was, um, just around the world and, uh, my mother and I exchanged letters and this was way before cell phones or easy, easy communications and, mm -hmm. and telephone calls long distance were really expensive. <clears throat> so she saved all of my letters, <clears throat> excuse me, from those years ago. And, uh, so I, I still have most of them. I still have. And then I have some of my uh, letters from my dad that he wrote to my mother when he was in the army. He wasn't in combat, but he was not a man of many words. And so some of his letters said, yeah. were things like, well, I'm only writing a few lines and he would write lines. <laughs> 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 but I'd liked, I was, I had a dream last night and it included my mother's mother, my grandmother, who I never knew because she passed away when I was a month old. And I, I realized that I don't know much about her, if anything. And so I had this dream about her where she was just passing through all of my, my life the, where I was at the time. And um, so I woke up this morning thinking that, you know, she would be a good person to, because all, all of my family's older generation is gone. So I have nobody to ask and about if So I thought I might write her a letter and, um, just, uh, I don't know what, what I would say, but, but I think I'd like to write her a letter. Oh, that's going to be special. Mm -hmm. I'd like to write um, my granddaughter. She is um, 20, about to be 21. <clears throat> she's in college, doing well, and she has a boyfriend. And I think she's really struggling between... Um, what to hook into in terms of a career, a relationship, mm -hmm. and she's still developing her identity. And I, I would just like to encourage her on that route. And um, relationships are so important, but so is developing your own identity. And um, I don't know if I can offer her any wisdom. I just would like to encourage her to explore everything everything is is out there for her so that would be who i would write as your assignment I think. that's wonderful and i love handwritten letters i have to say i write a lot of letters <clears throat> and but i don't receive as many as i would like that's the downfall yep <laughs> no <laughs> i agree with that you know, one of the things I always looked forward to as a kid was, uh, was at Christmas getting the cards, but used to, a lot of people would write, now a lot of these were typed, but they kind of gave you a rundown of what their year had been like. 
um, mm -hmm. for their family. And I used to always love to sit and read through those and hear what everyone had been doing that year. Um, Joy, I have a question though. What is an epistolary? I I'm not familiar with that term. Okay, yeah, and um, an epistolary is just, it's a book that is written as a collection of letters, or it could also be a collection of uh, journal or diary entries, um, things like that. Oh, also, okay. so, mm -hmm. right. it's just written in that style of it's like, um, and this is on on the list that you guys will get because our library has this book. Um, the, let's see if I say it right. The Guernsey Literary and Potato Peel Pie Society, which I love oh. that book. I adore it. And the movie was great, too. Um, but that's written as letters. Um, and I just, I don't know, there's something special and, and different about that. What is that about? Uh, thank you. Oh, it's so good. Oh, you have to read it. I'm sorry. I just love that book so much. <laughs> it's set, um, is it World War I or World War II? Somebody help me. I'm so bad. World War I, I saw the movie. It was really good. Yeah. Okay, World War One, and it is set on the island of Guernsey, or most of it's set on the island of Guernsey, and there's a group of people there who um, kind of form a little book club. They, the island was taken over by the Germans, um, which I didn't, I didn't know that part of history. I didn't, I didn't even realize what had happened there during this time period, um, mm -hmm. but it's this group of people, and, and they were out past their curfew one night, and they got caught by some of the German soldiers and they made up that they had been meeting for their book club because that was allowed. <laughs> and so they, they accidentally formed a book club. Oh, wow. <laughs> and they wrote, they wrote to this author who lived in London and she ended up coming to the island and meeting these, the members of this book club. And it is just precious. What is the name again? The title? <laughs> the... <laughs> The Guernsey Literary and Potato Peel Pie Society. <laughs> it's a mouthful. <laughs> the movie is also on Netflix. So if you read the book and you would like to watch the movie, that's where you can find it. Is that going to be on the PDF that we receive? It will be, <laughs> yes. Okay, thank you. So I don't, I don't have to say it again, right? <laughs> okay, right. I'll put it in the notes. <laughs> I usually write things down, but I took pictures and I looked, I didn't get that part. So thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> so would anyone else like to share who you're planning on writing or any special memories that you have about letters? I mean, definitely as you were going through the, your, the letters that you'd received, I remembered all the ones that I'd received. You know, I have a third grade French class pen pal and you know, I do have letters somewhere, you know, that I have to unearth, you know, I started to read through them, my dad to his mother when he was in the service, but it was, you know, it was very cut and dried about how many pairs of underwear and this kind of thing. So I sort of stalled on that. What, um, and then I had aunts that wrote me, um, and, you know, and I did write a, a cousin who, who had, you know, had gone to war. So yeah, all those things, you know, sort of, Come, are coming together is like, you know, I don't know, just something important to remember about and to, you know, think forward about. I think this is cool. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, you're welcome. I know. We, we, I had so much fun just like doing the research and thinking through the history part of this. Uh, one of the links that'll be in that PDF mm -hmm. was a, just a whole list of real life messages in bottles. And wow. guys, I was so inspired just reading those little snippets. Um, you'll, you'll definitely want to check that link out, but just so neat. So neat to think about those things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, many years ago, I, I always had pen pals. They used to be in a newspaper and you could just pick one. Oh, and yeah. I had several from China, but I don't have the letters anymore, but I still have the pictures of them because we used to swap pictures. <laughs> Yeah, I looked my, my, my pen pal up on the internet and I, I may have found her, but I didn't know what to do about it. I don't think there was an address, but I might look again with this. Maybe I'll write her. Oh, <laughs> how fun. Yeah, that would be really would, cool. It might be the right person, but it might not. But I could try. It wouldn't hurt to, you know, yeah. send us a short note and see what happens. <laughs> that would be oh, wow. so neat. You could reconnect after all these years and find out what, 
what she's been up to and ah, how neat. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to check for names on the back of the pictures. Maybe I could do that. That'd be great. Oh, so neat. Hmm. All right. Well, um, this is what you're going to get. So these, these pages will be in the, the PDF file that um, Stacey will send out for me. And I would love for you guys just to keep in touch. Um, I offer several different things. Um, I have things that I do for book clubs. So if you have a book club and if you read one of my books, um, I can meet with you either this way or even in person since, I mean, we are right here if that's, if that's a possibility to meet in person safely. Um, and then another thing is I'm always looking for beta readers. So those are readers who read my books before they come out. So if you're interested in taking a book for a test drive and giving me some feedback on it, or if you want to be part of my launch team um, or anything like that, then you can just let me know. And those are my, um, my contact. That's my contact information. The bottom one is the um, link to my author newsletter, which goes out twice a month. Um, and that'll all be in the PDF. So if you guys want to get in touch with me or just follow along, that is how. Um, what is a launch team and what is an ARC? Oh yeah, ARCs. So ARCs are um, advanced reader copies. And so they're just early copies of the books that go out to people who um, will write a review of, of an honest review in return for a book. Um, and then a launch team is, so when I get ready to launch a book, my launch team are the people who help me by just sharing the graphics that I make about my book, um, kind of helping me get the information out. Uh, it could be anything from just sharing on social media or um, even going to their local independent oh. bookstores or libraries and asking them to get the oh. copies. Um, there are so many different things that you can do, little things or big things uh, for a launch team. So, yeah. Okay, thank you. So, and I think, yep. That's it. Thank you guys so much for coming. And if you have questions or you want to share how your letter writing went, be sure to drop me a line. Thank, thank you. you. It was great. Appreciate it. Thank you, Joy. Thank you, Stacy. Yes, thank you. Yes, oh, thank thank you, Stacy. Thank y'all for coming. I hope y'all go home. Like everyone go write some letters. Okay. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. Oh, what is it? there's something in the chat. What is it? That's oh, the, the title. Thank you for putting book. that in there. <laughs> okay. Thanks All again. Right. Inspiring, fun. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Bye. Thank you very much, Joy.